folks, welcome again to another edition of the Heritage Wealth Planning YouTube channel. It is Saturday, I think it today is May 12th, May 12th, 2018, the day before Mother's Day. Don't you forget that, my friends, don't you forget it. Get out there and get something for your wife, your mom, your daughter, anyone who's a mom needs to get something just to remember them because moms are definitely important for our society. Hey, so today I want to just share with you a couple of things. My cell phone's ringing off the... Yeah, okay, there we go. Sorry about that. Today, I just want to share with you a little bit of a rant. I was noticing a couple articles. I do some Quora, um, you know, kind of Q&As where people ask me questions and whatnot, and I uh, respond back. And I, I found a couple questions that from investment managers that I, I don't know how to say it. It kind of ticks me off. And on top of that, I was reading these other articles, but other investment managers, and I just, I'm buying NFL teams. And I just, I, uh, it bothers me. So let me get into it. I'm going to show you the article first, the core thing I'm first and foremost talking about. So the question is, if index funds really outperform active management teams uh, 80% of the time, why haven't Wall Street brokerages and boutique firms gone the way of the dodo? Why don't wealthy people just buy index funds and stop paying uh, wealth management firms? All right. So here's this guy who answered this uh, just the other day, April 28th. Most famous index fund, S&P 500, for 13 years made zero return from December 31st, 1999 to January 10th, 2013. The index made nothing. Can you imagine going 13 years making no money? That is why you pay a professional to know when to move to counter market investments. These other investments more than doubled your money during that same time. But an individual in an index fund would not have moved their money and made nothing. This is why they pay wealthy management firms. They don't pay for guessing. They don't pay for someone else who has no idea where the market is going. All right. I don't even care. They just... The, the facts are Joe Cantu here, the chief investment officer at his firm, Cantu Tactical Wealth Management, is purely is just absolutely incorrectly wrong. And I'm not going to go so far as saying he's misleading people, even though I know there are investment management teams that do that. It's just absolutely incorrect information. There's no getting around that. And I'll share with you why in just a second. And so I answered him. I said, um, let's see if it shows you my answer here. Uh, let's see, where is my answer? Hold on just a second. There it is. Um, for some reason I can't answer Joe Cantu's answer direct. Not sure why. I don't see where Joe is getting his numbers about the S and P 500 returning zero from 31 December, 1999 to January, 2013. Well, actually I do because he is using simple price to price points for his index as opposed to total return. And this is a huge mistake, my friends, huge. And it's either ignorance on his part or it's deliberate miscalculation. Either one of those two are not acceptable for a guy who's a professional money manager. And I'm not just bagging on this guy, trust me. I'm gonna bag on somebody else here in just a second as well. It happens all the time and it's most frustrating because total return includes dividends. Uh, you look over the year return, year return of the Vanguard 500, which is including of the fees and it actually performed a, uh, it, by the end of 2010, your $100,000 you invested in December 31st, 1999 was worth 103,000 bucks. Now, that's not the right home, but, but certainly better than zero, like old Joe was saying, from December 31st, 1999 until 2013. That's an extra two years that he's discounting it. And I know why, because he's not using returns on dividends. And it's, it's wrong. Well, anyway, so this other guy pipes in, you know, if I can see where he emailed in here too, um, uh, maybe not. Another guy piped in, uh, shoot, let's see. No. Yeah, I can't see where he piped in. Ah, man. Oh, let's see, answer requested by, oh, right here. Another guy piped in and said, actually, you're still down around Thanksgiving 2011 which proves that anybody can misread a chart, but few understand his larger point, which is that putting all your money into one unmanaged index fund was a poor, usually unsurviable choice. Any number of blended 55 mile per hour allocation funds or rebalanced asset allocation models would have performed better and kept you in the market uh, through 2003 and 2009. Now, first of all, there's a straw man argument because this guy, what the initial question was, why didn't people do index funds? If index funds outperform active management 8% of the time, why haven't Wall Street brokers gone away with the dodo? Uh, what this guy Peter is saying down here, he's using a straw man and saying, all you had was an index fund. Well, if you had a, a broadly diversified index fund, the total stock market index, real estate investment trust index, all these various index funds, which is a 
55 power hour allocation fund too, you would have done just fine relative to what the high fee, high falutin investment managers are. But even that, I don't care. At the end of the day, whatever. The facts are, that's not Joe's argument. Joe's argument was the S&P 500 specifically. And Peter here uh, completely misses that. He says, oh, uh, which proves that anyone can misread a chart. Again, it wasn't Thanksgiving 2011 where the market came back to be in the black. It was the end of 2010. Yeah, that's 11 months difference. That's still a significant time. And I responded, Peter, I said, you're wrong. Simply look at the year over year return of the uh, VFINX. And at the end of 2010, you were up to 103,000 bucks. I just, for the love of me, I don't get what is wrong with these active managers when they're either misleading uh, people deliberately or just out of ignorance. I don't understand it and it ticks me off. I do understand it actually, because there's so much money at stake, so much money at stake. And that's the second part of this video here today. So this guy is saying a 55 mile an hour, just basically a bland index fund or a bland asset allocation fund would have done better. Well, yeah, I'm not, not saying that. What I am saying is what the initial commenter said was that the S&P 500 took 13 years to have made money. And according, he would have been able to predict the market. There's just no validity. There's just no proof of that whatsoever. There'll never be proof of that whatsoever because we just cannot know where the market is going. We don't. We have tons and tons and tons of research that says the performance of the last three years does not equate to the performance of the next three. So if you were able to predict the market decline from 2001 to two, were you able to do the same in 2007, eight? And just, no, you can't. We just can't. There is none. There is none. There is none. And then factor in, they throw the fees on top of that, my friends. Active management is a sucker's bet. There's no getting around that. And I know why these guys are doing this because the fees at stake which leads me to point two. So I used to work for a firm and uh, the guy who ran the firm had his own private plane. All right, and that ticks me off because I'm like, wait a second, man, where is your, now this guy would fly all around the country trying to recruit people to his firm so he could be basically almost like multi-level marketing. And he's a very prominent guy, still out there on YouTube and all that. He's going around trying to get other investment firms to put, you know, to basically go underneath his, he's got this big broad thing. He wants these other guys to flow underneath him so he can take a cut of the fees that these other investment firms are doing. And it I just, it, it ticks me off. And the reason for that is because this guy's flying around in his private plane on the backs of the middle-class investors who are trusting him and the firms that he represents to do right by him. And some of these firms that he represents charge over 2% a year. And I'll never forget, I had this client, I just, you know, I had these clients, and I'll just never forget, if they had one market decline, they are SOL, SOL, they are going to be crunched at $400,000, that's it, they're taking a, sig a pretty sizable amount, and they probably would be okay if the market didn't decline 20%, but one market correction like that, and they're, they're just in a world of hurt, yet this guy right here is still flying around his corporate jet on the backs of these guys. Is he going to make good, make them whole when the markets decline 20%? And don't forget, they're still paying 2% a year in fees. 2% a year and 400,000 bucks, that's $8,000 a year. They're never going to outperform the market. They're never going to do it. And not, and I, Frank, I don't even care at the end of the day. It's not why you invest anyway to outperform the market. And I'll do another video on that someday. But the issue is they're still going to pay 2% a year come hell or high water. Well, this guy's flying around in a corporate jet. And it's not just this guy. A long time ago, I'll never forget this, E-Trade. When E-Trade first came out, they, uh, they, man, they stuck it to the brokerage industry real good. They had these, you know, this rich guy and his wife, and they had this huge mansion and everything. And, and E-Trade saying, why are you paying for these guys' fancy schmancy houses and whatnot? And it was, it was a wonderful, wonderful uh, take on the brokerage industry because it was exactly that. The brokers are getting paid. And the investors are getting broker. That's just a fact. And uh, and the, I remember they sued the investment comp world the investment. Uh, I forgot who the, the I don't know who investment company institute. I don't remember who their their lobbying group. But they sued because they're saying that's insinuating that all brokers are living like that. And you know not all brokers are. There's lots of starving brokers. I know that for a fact. Uh, and they won. So E Trade had to take that art that ad down. I just I'll never forget that. It was a wonderful ad because it's true, man. It's true. There's a lot of brokers out there, investment professionals making money off middle class people. And it's just it's not right. They're not creating any value at all. They're taking value. They're taking value. 
They're taking value, which is why John Bogle is hated in the industry, is hated because he says it. He calls them out. He says it explicitly. You are taking money from the average investor so you can live high on the hog. Yeah, it's a pet peeve of mine. All right. So let's go back now to this article I saw here just today, the NFL. I didn't read through the NFL, but it's interesting. David Tepper had the uh, Carolina Panthers. Now, who's David Tepper? Well, let's take a look who David Tepper is. If I can get the computer to cooperate. Uh, so I don't care about the politics of the Carolina Panthers. Don't care. Really don't care about the Panthers. Really don't really care about the NFL anymore. I mean, I was hoping the Patriots would have won the Super Bowl uh, at the end of the day. Just it, every as I get older, it starts to get uh, less and less interesting to me. Um, and uh, NFL insider Ian Rappaport reported Friday that Panthers owner Jerry Richardson has zeroed in on hedge fund manager David Tepper as the best candidate to buy the team. Hedge fund manager. So then it led me to this article. And this is just, I literally it took two seconds to do some research. And I came up with this. Hedge funds managers pour money into 2016 and Trump is a factor. And so we have uh, Ted Cruz and both Hillary Clinton. 47 million has been lavished on presidential candidates and lawmakers and the political action committees that support them by two dozen of the industry's top fund managers. Most of the fund support was going to Cruz and Clinton. Robert Mercer, and he's a pretty right wing guy. You know, um, he gave eleven million to a pack that supports Cruz, and then of course Clinton's main benefactor is billionaire George Soros, and we know what he is. He's a communist sympathizer, and he used to be a Nazi sympathizer. Now he's changed stripes. Either way, he's still evil. So at the end of the day, what are these guys doing for their money? What's their money creating? Are they creating wealth? Or are they taking wealth? Yeah, you can make some arguments. There are some hedge fund managers that are creating wealth for sure. I think the vast majority are not. And the angel investors and whatnot, certainly they do. Are hedge fund managers, by and large, doing better than what you could get just putting your investments in the S&P 500? The answer is absolutely not. There's absolutely no proof of that. None. There's none. Anyone who says differently is just lying to you. There's no proof whatsoever that hedge fund managers do better than a broad-based index market for you as a middle-class investor. Now, if you're some rich cat and you say, hey, I want to invest some you know, Silicon Valley startups, hey, more power too. I don't have any problem with that. But why do hedge fund managers have this unlimited support group of just getting money flowing in where they got billions of dollars to buy politicians, to buy football teams, to take down uh, economies. Where, where is that coming from? What wealth are they creating to do that? They're not generating wealth. They're taking wealth because they're taking a fee off the money they manage and they're not giving you that fee times in a proportional percentage. So if you're say you're getting 10%, they're charging two. You're only getting eight. Well, if you're paying two, you should be getting 12. You're not. You're not getting 12. You're getting eight after fees. So you're actually probably getting six after fees. And yet, if you would have just stayed in a broad-based index, you would have got 10. So the hedge fund manager is living like a king off of your wealth. And again, if you're a rich guy, I don't care. That's your choice. But if you're a middle-class Joe Schmo out there and you're a hedge fund manager, not, not even just hedge fund managers, just investment managers, and you're getting one and a half to 2% a year of fees, there's no way you're performing for that. There's none. There is none. The only way you get alpha, and alpha is the return, the excess return you get from a market. The only way you get alpha is someone else gives up alpha. So if the market returns 10 and you get 12, that means inherently someone had to get eight. There's no getting around that. It is a zero-sum game. And then you throw fees. The market returns 10, but you're charging two and a half, two percent fee and you get 12. You're only getting 12, 10 after fee. The other guy still had to get eight and he's charging two percent. He's getting six. So the market gives you 10. You got 12 and this guy got eight. All right. So before fees is 12, 10 and eight. OK, that would kind of make sense. After fees is 10, 10 and six. And yet if you just sat in the market, you would have just done just as fine. The hedge fund manager and kept your money in your pocket as opposed to giving him 12 or giving him 2%. It's a zero sum game, my friends, when he comes to investing, trying to get alpha. The Remember, alpha is a catchphrase. Everyone wants to get alpha, 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 alpha. I wanna get more than the market returns. That is how I justify my reason for being. And even if you can get alpha, and there's no history that you can do it consistently, you certainly can't predict that for and forehand of who's gonna do it next coming up. Like our old guy, Joe, here says, you want some guy who can predict the market. There's no guy who can do that. The only guy who can predict the market is long since gone, died over 2,000 years ago. 
No one can predict the future. No one ever will. No one has. And then on top, they throw fees on there. It's a loser's game, a zero sum game for alpha. Alpha is what you're saying. I will give you excess returns over the market. That means inherently someone has to get inferior returns under the market. There's no two ways around that. How do we know that the hedge fund managers, the investment managers, and all this are going to go kicking and screaming and deliberately misleading people or making stuff up explicitly? Because the fees at stake, my friends, there's tons of fees. Do not fall victim to it. Do not fall victim to it. When you read some guy saying right here, and this ticks me off. I'm just picking on this guy because he said it. The most famous index fund, the S&P 500, for 13 years made zero return. It's simply factually incorrect. Not anywhere near true. It's not. There's no argument about that. Just go to simplefinance.yahoo.com, type in VFINX, and you can see the year-over-year -year returns, which I have actually done for it. And I'll show it with you in a second. And then what he says is, this is why you pay for wealthy firms. They don't pay for guessing. They don't pay for someone else who has no idea where the market is going. The implicit insinuation is that they have an idea where the market is going. My friends, just read the research from Long-Term Capital Management, LTCM. They are 10 times smarter than those guys. This guy, old Joe Cantu here, 10 times smarter. They literally won Nobel Prizes. They had PhDs. They knew everything. They had all the algorithms. All the, They were literally the smartest guy in the room. And they went bankrupt because they could not predict where the market was going. Makes me mad. Makes me mad. And this other guy down here saying, oh, well, you could have done it in a, in a right here. This guy, investment management consultant, he he says you could have done it in, in, a, uh, in a just a plain asset allocation fund. Yeah, no crap. Exactly. Get in a plain asset allocation fund, watch your fees and be done with it. Be done with it. And even though this guy is even saying at the end of the day, you could have you didn't make any money until November 2011. Again, for something not true. All right. Sorry about this rant. It just ticks me off because the money that you are paying for these guys isn't going for you. Is going so these other guys can buy teams like the Carolina Panthers or George Soros and uh, Robert Mercer can fund their political lackeys. And it's wrong because there's too many people in the United States who don't have enough to live on for retirement. And when these guys are getting rich off the freaking shenanigans they're using, the misrepresentation, misrepresentation, and the pure just ignorance that they're allowing, or uh, yeah, I'm, I, I hate to even, I don't even think it's ignorance, Frank, I, but I'll just leave it at that. Is wrong and they should not, they should, they need to be held, their feet need to be held to the fire. No other way around that. All right, we'll see you. So, with that said, don't forget to subscribe, give me a thumbs up on this if you like it. Hey, if you want to challenge me, that's fine. Prove to me, prove to me that the SP 500 took until 2013 to get back to black. Prove to me, prove to me that the SP 500 took until November 2011 to get back to black. Prove it. You're making those claims. There's no validation for that whatsoever. There's none. If you can prove it to me, I'll I'll re I'll apologize on this video. But you can't because it's factually correct what I'm saying. And you're factually incorrect what you're saying. And people are reading that and taking the assumptions that they can beat the market because other people know better than what the average market prognosticator does. And it's simply not true. It is not true. And on top of that, with the fees in there, nope. All right, so subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the little bell for notifications. Thumbs up are always helpful. And uh, don't forget to go to heritagewealthplanning.com for my blog and my podcast. And I'm going to do a, a podcast on this as well. And then don't forget uh, to go to uh, you know, the YouTube channel or here, the heritagewealthplanning.com. Uh, uh, oh, my, my podcast, the Josh Ganley podcast. Go there as well. And we'll see you next time on the Heritage Wealth Planning with YouTube channel. Thanks, guys.